What is going on lads? What's the crack? Welcome back to the channel. We are back with the epic, epic Manchester United player pack. This contains three players as you can see here in a pack of 150. You've got Van Roy, you've got Peter Schmeichel and you've got Dennis Irwin. My man Dennis Irwin. Now I definitely would like any of the three of these. I think they're extremely good players. I think they're actually, look, I am a United fan so maybe I'm a bit biased. But I do think that these three are better than the Arsenal pack. If you've missed my Arsenal review of Petit, Wilshire, and uh, Seaman, uh, I would definitely check that out to compare them. But I definitely think that this Manchester United pack has got more end game uh, squad based players, if that makes sense, right? So we are going to start with Dennis Irwin, who's the left back. He only goes to a 94 overall. He starts as an as a, an 82 left back with what 31 levels to go. But I, I really like his skills, man. I really like his, his card. Um, you've, you've got interception, you've got acrobatic clearance, you've got captaincy, fighting spirit, and pinpoint crossing, as well as amazing run, speeding bullet, and long ranger. I definitely feel he like he should have had early crosser, and I also feel like he should have been able to play left midfielder, even though he can play there as a secondary position, he can't play there as a primary position. I mean, I think sometimes people forget how good Erwin was on the ball. Like, he was absolutely insane. His tight possession, his dribbling was extremely good um, for a player that was going to be getting up and down a lot. While he still had he still had very good defensive skills as well. So even though he's down as an offensive fullback, when we do train him up and we look at his stats here, he can actually be trained in a very nice way. Obviously, we're going to have as his main role being his stamina and his defense because we do have him as an offensive fullback, but I'm going to be playing him defensively because he doesn't have that blister and acceleration. We could boost it up a bit, but even eight points into acceleration to max out and get the best overall rating on the card, which isn't a massive issue, uh, you still are only going to get that, uh, that acceleration there, right? So you're not going to have a blisteringly fast Roberto Carlos-esque type acceleration left back here. So I, I do feel like they, they should have given him early crosser, and I feel like his passing should have been a little bit higher as well. So a little bit disappointed in this card, right? Now, obviously, if you wanted to take away um, his defensive capabilities and you wanted to just leave him as more of an attacking-based option, four points into defending would be quite decent. I don't think you need anything into aerial strength. I will do a training guide on all of these as normal. Um, we'll usually have three up a day um, for people. But I definitely think you should just be really kind of focusing on his air, his um, attacking ability. I think that's probably the best way to go with him. He still has good aggression and stuff. Um, but yeah, a little bit disappointed in his passing, but everything else is fairly decent. And I do think that he is um, a good left back to have if you don't have, you know, a top class left back already in your squad, which you probably do by now. Um, so yeah, a bit of a disappointment on that one, but still very, very, very usable. Next up, we have got Peter Schmeichel. One of my favorite goalkeepers growing up, obviously, is a United fan. He's got low punt, long throw, and captaincy. So while we did have this issue with David Seaman from uh, Arsenal with not having that long throw or low punt, Schmeichel is very, very easy to slot into any formation, any tactics, any setup. And I think that he will be an improvement on pretty much 97 or 8% of other keepers in the game because he's a giant number one. He's got a wavering form at B rating, which obviously is going to be better than any standard card that you have. And he's also got 24 levels to go, which when we look at him, I don't usually spend too much time reviewing or looking at the goalkeepers. If you've got reflexes over 90, that goalkeeper is going to be, you know, pulling off worldly saves for you. And look at look at this stats, man. I mean, absolutely insane. 90, 90 plus in three different stats with 80 jump, 80 physical contact and catching and parrying are clearing uh, above the 85 mark as well. I mean, this is insane stats. On paper, I would say he's probably up there um, in the top, top five goalkeepers, um, especially for his size and his height and everything that you have here. He's just an imposing figure, um, and he reminds me most of Donnarumma. He looks like a better version of Donnarumma, so if you do pull him, I definitely think he is going to be a monster for you between the sticks. I think the thing is, lads, right, when you have a goalkeeper, when you have a goalkeeper that you're going to be using pretty much all the time, right? Like once you get your goalkeeper that you're happy with and he's on form, such as me with Donnarumma, um, or else I'll slot in Courtois or I'll slot in Oliver Kahn or Shea Given or somebody like that, whoever is on form, it's very hard to sway away from a goalkeeper, even if he makes a couple of mistakes. Um, you know, Donnarumma has cost me promotion sometimes, he's cost me matches sometimes, he's cost me big um, points when I've been going up to divisions. 
but 90% of the time he is a rock and saves me more often than not. So once you get used to a goalkeeper, you get used to the manual goalkeeping and you get used to his skills and his positioning, uh, it's very hard to switch off a goalkeeper like you would maybe a different position on the pitch such as anchorman or box-to-box, which are very interchangeable positions. So last but not least in this trio of player pack uh, Manchester United epics, we have Van Nistelrooy, one of my favourite players growing up, lads. I say that about all the United players, don't I? But this guy was the real deal, man. I was heartbroken um, when he went to Real Madrid um, or when he was at Real Madrid. But look, he was he had a fantastic career at United. I thought that he probably could have stayed on for another year. Um, and I, I, I loved him, man. I loved watching him because he was a throwback centre forward. Uh, you know, just give the ball into him and see what he could do with it. And obviously, uh, kind of similar to Van Persie and his role that he did at United when they won the league. I think that was in 20... Was that 15? No, I think it was earlier. 13, maybe? I don't know. Uh, time is moving so fast. But yeah, Van Nistelrooy, lads. He's, he, look, I see a lot of people use Van Nistelrooy, and I, I, I don't question why, right? He has standard form, which I think is just crazy. Obviously, probably got to do with the injuries um, that he had, but I definitely think he should have unwavering form. All of these players, the Epics, should be the best version of themselves, right? Instead of releasing multiple different cards... There should be, you know, a prime time one, which is like a certain match. And then you have your legend version, which is the best player at, as he was in that season. You know what I mean? At that point in his, in his career, the best ever. Um, and like, you know, like a goat version of his own card, basically. But yeah, other than that, I think his, his player skills are phenomenal. Chip shot control, long range shooting, acrobatic finishing, rising shot, first time shot, one touch pass, a low lofted pass and heading. So straight away, you've got aerial ability, you've got acrobatic finishing, you've got one-touch pass, so you don't need really high passing skills, and Fox in the box is going to make insane runs in. Now, when we look at how we train him up, look at the offensive awareness and look at the finishing. That is what you're going to be looking at here. Now, this is the 98-rated version of it, which will go above 100 when you get him in a 100-team playstyle um, squad, but I definitely don't think you need these stats as high. Now, I will do a training guide on Van Nistelrooy to show you exactly what I would do with him to make him, in my opinion, the ultimate version of him. Um, Because you don't need passing. You don't really need dribbling either. I mean, you could pop three into dribbling if you're going to be running with him, but I wouldn't do that. Um, it's all going to be about getting into the position and uh, positions that you want him to get into. And that is to be good in the air, good under the high ball, and obviously being able to get in with the offensive awareness as well. So yeah, for me, I definitely think that the United pack is extremely solid across the board. You know, I think that Schmeichel is better, um, is the better of the goalkeepers between the two packs. Obviously, you know, um, that's my Manchester United bias probably shining through, but I think he is just a better goalkeeper all around, especially with long throw and low punt. I think that seals the deal. And I think Van Nistelrooy is probably going to get into any of your squads because you can play him multiple ways and he's one of the best finishers in the game, including his player AI is unbelievable and his ID is unreal. So that is it for me, lads. I'll be back quite soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying this and we will see you in a live stream quite, uh, quite soon. So peace.